Let's take a look at some charts for Zcash, the latest article on Brave New Coin. So yesterday night when I'm writing this, it finally hit me. I finally had the epiphany. As I'm trying to slog through all of the ver various characteristics of Zcash, why is it so hated by everyone? <laughs> Hated's a bad word, okay, but it's disliked by many. And it finally, I finally put the list in my head together and I was like, oh, this is why. It was a non-ICO, ICO, like a reverse ICO. It has sort of privacy-ish functions that nobody uses and are or broken and are unavailable on exchange side for regulatory reasons. It has this dev fund that's higher than other chains with dev funds. It had high profile advisors, Gavin Andreessen, Vitalik, Arthur Brightman of Tezos. It even had high profile investors, Roger Ver. It's an older coin. So it's got a lot of, I'm going to call it emotional crypto baggage. <laughs> Just like it's on to, for me personally, it's on the wrong side of every argument that it could possibly be on. So I think that's why it's as a community in general, most people aren't big, a big fan of Zcash. And if you look at the fundamentals, which I'm about to show you, it doesn't look good for the, the transaction side, the on chain side. I firmly believe now this isn't an original thought by me, but I firmly believe that one day it'll be merged with. ETH in some fashion, but maybe become an ERC-20. I don't know. Some sort of weird merger thing that we've never seen between coins. It's possible. How that'll affect the price, I don't know. If that'll matter, I don't know. But I think that's where it's headed. Now, the fact that price is rising definitely helps the development side. So maybe it can be a phoenix and rise from the ashes. But something else that in my head I had on my list was this idea that everyone, anyone who's bought Zcash is currently underwater, for the most part, on balance. Anybody in the history of Zcash who has been holding is, is underwater, until very recently. All right, so let's look at some charts. Market cap wise, it's in the middle of coins with privacy capabilities. And again, Zcash has optional privacy, and some people, including myself, don't really think this is a great option, because if it's not default, then no one uses it, or it's hard to use, or exchanges disable it. And the anonymity set is small and easily determined if both transactor and receiver aren't shielded or anonymous. So there's some issues there. Um, the one metric that Zcash is leading among all these is total daily transaction volume. Honestly, no idea what this is about because if you look at the transactions per day, they're near all-time lows or pushing all-time lows. If you look at the something else that isn't on here is the uh, trade volume on exchange side. It's extremely high, and it just doesn't make sense. So it's it's like 35% of the total market cap is uh, traded. So there's clearly some sort of fake volume or fudging going on there. But just looking at all these metrics together, you know, Zeke's at the middle of the pack or bottom of the pack for everything. And that's, <clears throat> that's not exactly concerning in a vacuum, but it definitely shows that it's not a leader in anything in particular other than total daily transaction volume, which I don't really know what that means for Zeke, if that's because of certain chain characteristics. I mean, it is it is so much higher than everything else with no transactions on the chain. It just doesn't make sense to me. So there's something I don't understand there. Now, if we look at the inflation for a bunch of coins, we can see that, again, instead of an ICO, Zeke had this founder's reward thing where they would take a percentage of the block reward for development to pay the advisors, that sort of thing. That's going to end in June this year, and they've voted as a community to continue a 20% fund reserved for development and promotion and marketing and Zcash Foundation and grants and proposals, that sort of thing. The one thing that sticks out to me is the basically outlier that Zcash is from a inflation perspective other than grin which is up here it's just way above the rest percentage wise per year so as a store of value it's hard to actually buy and hold this because you're going to get deflated or you're going to get uh, diluted into oblivion and that's pretty clear that's what happened over the past few years and this is the current voted on distribution hasn't been implemented on the protocol side yet but will likely 
be implemented by June 2020, which is when the having is set to occur and the original founder's reward is set to end. If we look at transactions on the chain and shielded transactions, not something you want to see if you're bullish. You don't want to see transactions per day continue to decline. If there's some sort of optional metric on a chain, you don't want to see it flatlining. You don't want to see it declining. You want to see it increasing. It's hard to actually pull out the resolution of the amount of shielded transactions, but they're currently around 13% based on this data of the total transactions per day. If we look at block size and fees, so the line and the fill, block size is near all-time lows, slightly rising over the past few months. Fees, all-time lows, slightly rising over the past few months. In general, this just says no one's really using the chain. The main reason I look at block size you know, is is the chain being used in any way? If it's not transactions, is it other methods? I don't really see that for Zcash. They've had a series of protocol upgrades over the past few years that have brought fees way down in general, which is good for the chain. It says that it shows promise in a scalability sense, but no one's really using it currently. If we look at active addresses, which is the fill here, and we look at NVT, which is an inverse metric of economic utility, it shows the exact bearish picture you'd expect um, for something that is hardly used. So active addresses on a monthly basis are at an all-time low. NVT is in the middle of the historic range, arguably near the higher end, but it is rising, and that's not something you want to see. It says that the current price does not support the utility of the chain, which is just another way of aggregating all the stuff I already said Earlier, you know, there's low, no transactions, there's no addresses. Not no, but it's historically at a low level. If we look at MVRV, which is another crypto native sort of utility metric, have people moved coins recently? Is it overbought or oversold? Uh, so down here would be oversold, up here would be overbought. And it's currently in the middle of the range. It's rising, but it's uh, certainly not anything to be alarmed about. This is probably the most neutral of the fundamental metrics amongst everything I've talked about. Um, the latest hard fork dropped the difficulty on the chain. You can see that on the uh, graph here. Historically, sort of reset to February, March 2019 levels. Hash rate has come up a little bit, which is what you'd expect. Um, after the halving, it'll be interesting to see. So miners are in a pretty good profit right now at $0.04 cents per kilowatt. Uh, but after the having, it'll be interesting to see what happens to the hash rate because the block reward will decrease by half. So miners who were previously making a profit may not be any longer, and that'll adjust difficulty slightly if hash rate comes off. So it's kind of a check and balance on itself. If you look at Google Trends, again, not something you want to see if you're bullish, just a flat line over the past couple of years. Contrast this to Tezos and Link, where they're at either at all-time highs or pushing all-time highs. I just don't see based on the metrics I've shown in the video, trying to remain unbiased. I don't see any grassroots interest or global interest in some other fashion for the chain itself. So as bearish as I am on the fundamentals, the charts actually look really good. So to me, if a chart person who cares less about fundamentals than technicals, I can still buy and sell this and remain unbiased. So let's look at the things we always look at, long shorts on Bitfinex, VPVR, which is the volume profile of the visible range, the, an oscillator called the Relative Strength Index, the RSI, and the 50 and the 200 estimated uh, exponential moving average, EMA. So if we're talking about the long shorts, the reason I look at this is mainly to see our shorts at an all-time high, our longs at an all-time high, because if that happens, the trade is typically crowded, and it says people who have already longed are the ones who are, are going to long and there aren't going to be any more longs. So if you see shorts at an all-time high as price is increasing, that is bull fuel, baby. Immediately those shorts got pulled <laughs> and uh, price went higher. And this is what you'd expect. Longs have come down a little bit since June, July last year. Nothing specific to discuss there. Um, it is important to see the ratio, though. It's still heavily net long now over the past few weeks. Looking at the VPVR, this is exactly the profile you'd want to see if you'd expect additional upside because it's currently consolidating in a heavy volume range. These bars mean there's been a lot of volume 
at this price. So if we exceed 65 to 75, I'd expect 100 very quickly. I'd expect returning to these local highs very quickly. Now there was a bit of a bearish divergence here. You had higher highs in price, lower highs in oscillator. One of the only reasons I look at RSI, the other being is RSI completely blown out in one direction or the other, and it was also blown out a few weeks ago. So the oscillator has since reset. It's come back to 50. Price has reset a little bit. It's come back to the 50 EMA. We've had a golden cross only the second since 2017. So there's definitely reasons to be bullish here based on technicals for bullish continuation. You know, I'd expect us to make higher highs over lower lows so long as the consolidation holds above the 200 and these EMAs hold as a golden cross. Looking at the cloud, same thing. It's spent very little of its time historically above the cloud. You can see it's just been below the cloud most of the time, just selling off. You know, it hit basically the 2017 low and it's back above the cloud again. Again, this points to bullish continuation. You want it above the cloud, TK cross bullish, bullish cloud, lagging span above cloud, above price. We have all those things. We may get a bounce on the Kijun here around 55, but in general, you know, like we got here, bounce, 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 bounce. I'd expect us to keep going over the the mid to long term. Then lastly, if you look at Zeke BTC, infamously it's had virtually no time above the 200 until very recently. So again, this is the cloud, the 50, the 200, VPVR, RSI. RSI had a bear div, it's reset. The 5200 has its golden cross a few days ago. The first one ever, it's above the 200 this year for the first time ever. It's above the daily cloud for the first time since 2017. These are all very bullish things. Reasons to be bullish, certainly. I'd expect a mid to long-term target of 014 or 015. Psychological level, I think I said uh, in the conclusion of the article, even 250 is possible over the long-term. And that would make sense if we're going to 05, 015 on the Zeke BTC pair.